Hi, uh, Spanish learners. I'm Juan Manuel. I'm a Guatemalan biologist, and I'm going to teach you to prepare a small box to have some vegetables to get at home. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to find a place to fix. It can be a lot of things, not necessarily only like this tomato box. Like for example, if we have buckets at home, if we have like, uh, you know, some things that you might disposal, sometimes you can turn it into a, into a nice uh, small garden and you can keep at home. So since we have today this box, we're going to start to prepare in it in order that we can start putting our plants in our new urban garden. And also we're going to learn a couple of Spanish words uh, during the process. Okay, so the first thing guys, we have this uh, wooden box that people use in, usually in the markets, you know, to sell to usually tomatoes. So it's very light wood and also sometimes it can come a little bit dirty. And since it's something that we want to keep at home, we need to clean it properly, you know, because since it's in a public place, we don't know if they have some chemicals that they put in the vegetables over there and everything that we're going to do today is going to be organic. So just very quick, just to clean it from, you know, anything that it might have on top. And also it's going to be easier to put some wax to protect the wood later that I'm going to explain you how. Just we can take these pieces off, for example, you see it over there? Yeah, so right now, you know, just to help me out a little bit, I'm using a sandpaper uh, with a, you know, a piece of stone that I have over here. So little by little, you can see it start getting smoother. The idea is not to sand it totally, it's just to make it easier for the oils we're going to use, uh, or in this case, the bee wax. So you can fix it a little bit easier to the wood. We're going to do this because we're going to put soil on this. And even though, you know, it's a little bit light, it can handle the soil uh, with the plants on it. Yeah, so we're ready. So now we can start with the bee wax. Well, we have it from a lot of different apicultures that we have here in Guatemala. Kind of looks like this. I, be, I used this before, but usually if you can get access to this and you want to, to cure more wood in a bigger scale, you can melt it with different oils. You can use, for example, canola oil, olive oil, coconut oil, mix it with this and with um, a brush, you can brush it. You know, and this will make a layer. The oil will fix in the wood, also with the bee wax, and it's going to make it in, uh, impermeable. Use an alternative to varnish, since varnish also is going to release a lot of the chemicals into the soil. So eventually, uh, those things, the plants absorb it, and also you eventually you. So this is like a, a, a natural way to do it also that is, you know, very easy, very inexpensive. And if you don't have uh, access to bee wax, you can use the oils that you can find at home, like such as canola oil, coconut oil, olive oil, to, to cure your wood, okay? Really quickly here, you can see how it starts changing the tone. And if you were able to touch it, but if you can listen, you hear that the wax is starting to get in the, in the wood. Since we're going to put the soil and start adding water to this, it's going to protect and give a little bit of more lifespan to our box. Since we're trying to reuse here all a little bit, um, I have this, this saco or small sack that we use for the vegetables when we're picking up avocados or tomatoes. We are going to use it here also so the soil or the dirt doesn't go underneath it, you know, just to protect it a little bit. But you can use, you know, other things that you can find at home. Let's try to use as less plastic as we want, but also if you don't have something else, you can put like a small layer of plastic and open just tiny holes in the bottom so it can drain the water when you have excess of water in your plants. So, saco or sac. And ju let's just make it even along our box. Our first layer is going to be the sand. Our second layer is going to be this prepared dirt or tierra. Both of them, uh, we clean them with some bacteria in order 
to protect the soil since we're going to have it indoors or in our apartments, inside our houses. So this way we protect that this soil doesn't bring any other bacteria or disease that can affect our plants that we're going to put in our box, but also for ourselves and plants that we have outside. There are some bacteria that they will eat other ones and also they are going to colonize the, the, the soil. They, don't, they won't let like other bad bacteria to grow and affect their roots. So you can see it's, uh, it's very black, but also it's, it, you have it, it's very compact. So this way we have uh, the, um, the water system can drain. So you can probably can find this in any gardening store um, or for example, the soil, you can make it by yourself. Like this is a mix of regular soil with uh, some dried leaves and we make a compost with this, a composting process. So this one that I have in this bag is called Bokashi. You can see it's even a little bit darker than this one. Bokashi is a fermented compost or a compost process that is based on fermentation. The Bokashi, you can also make it at home. If you have some buckets like this, you can add ashes, you can add the green leaves that you have from the waste, from the vegetables that when you clean at home. And then you will need to add fish or the waste of fish. This means all the guts inside. Or you can use uh, chicken feces or cow feces. We're going to add also all the dry leaves that we can find at home, such as like this area, all the dry leaves, you can take them out. So we're going to use yeast, hot water, panela. So with this or sugar, in case you don't have it, better if it's brown sugar. And we also need to activate the yeast. So heat is a way to activate it. So what is going to happen is like all this uh, fungi growing is going to fed on everything around it. It's going to get warm. It's going to get around 40 Celsius and you can start moving it, moving it, moving it every day. You know, eventually this is going to decompose. It will depend also in the temperature where you're going to make it and you need to protect this from water, okay? You need to cover it properly and you can use buckets like this to make it at home, okay? There are many recipes to make bokashi. You can easily find it on the internet and you can adapt it to make it at home with things that you have. This is the this is from worms. The, the process when you make compost with worms, you have uh, also like a tea that you can make. Basically, this is worm pea or pipi de lombriz. So you see, we use a lot of waste. So we're going, you're using feces, but you know, all of these that you're going to add to the soil is going to be food for your plants, you know. So let's start. We add the pomesan over here and we make sure to make it very even. We don't want to put too much because, but we want to have good drain system for our pot. Okay, now we have about half an inch of this, uh, which is good. Half an inch, one inch is okay, okay guys, for, for the size of the box that we're going to use. So now the second layer, but remember, we're going to mix this one with the Bokashi, okay? So we're going to be adding the first layer of the dirt that we have already cleaned with our, with our bacteria. For this one, I use a bacteria called Bacillus. In a lot of horticulture uh, stores, you can find it and they can help you out a little bit more if you can use it because for example, this one, you can also apply it to the leaves for certain plants and they will colonize the space on the leaves. So imagine you have a leaf like this and you apply good bacteria around it. So they're going to have all the space and bad fungus or bad bacteria won't be able to grow if they don't have a space. So this is the idea, you know, this is the idea of adding all of these good bacteria to your, to your pots or plants. Let's add an extra layer of sand just to mix it with this one. It's very important that our soil is not too um, fixed because also you need a space for air to pass in between the roots, which is, is good for them. So you need a, a good mix of both. That way you can have some good soil that will retain the nutrients, but at the same time, you have some porosity in the soil that will allow oxygen to pass and we're going to add the bokashi to this. Usually when you're going to plant it like that, you can use 20% of a bokashi mix 
for the total of your soil mix that you're going to use. You don't necessarily need to change this soil for maybe at least two years, but you can always complement it, adding nutrients to it, okay? But you can have it for quite some time if you, if you make it good. We make sure to cover very well. So now we finish our box, well, with our soil, but we also need to add some water or agua to it. Why? Imagine that you're the, for the plants, the, the root system is a, it's a way that they exchange nutrients, water, but, uh, but if, if it's too dry, it's very hard for them. So this is just to make it a little bit more easier for them. So water, agua. Okay, after this, we're adding a little bit more of the rest that we have from the top and we're going to let it sit for a couple of minutes, okay? So the water can go all the way down and it's not as muddy as it looks like now, okay? Okay guys, so this box, you can either choose to leave it outside in a space like this, just, you know, they don't need to get too much direct sun, but enough clarity during the day, or you can save it at home. Remember that we have been preparing the soil in order that is safe to have it inside. What I mean with this is that if we have some plants, we're not going to bring bad fungus or bar, bad bacteria inside our house uh, that they can contaminate the rest of our plants we have. Okay, let's go inside and let's check our plants out. Okay guys, so let's assume we're in, a, in an apartment and we already have our box just ready to plant, you know? And we have put some of our plants in the small pots that we can grow them from seeds and then eventually pass it over here. So we have lettuce here, o lechuga, we have chard, o acelga, we have onions, o cebolla, we have arugula, or rucula, and this is uh, butter squash or calabaza mantequilla. This is tricky, right? Calabaza mantequilla. This will take about three months, or depends on how big you want your onions. Uh, but it will take around three months to harvest. And these ones, you know, every time you cut them, they, they won't flower. They will stay in this state called vegetative state. So they're going to continue producing more leaves instead of a flower. So for example, if you recognize that it's growing a different type of leaf over here, you just cut it and you will have a little bit of more extra time. Eventually, you're going to be able to have your own seeds and to continue your planting from this. In a, a month or a couple of months, you will be able to start harvesting your own squash. And you can do this at least three times during the whole lifespan of the plants. And you can always keep you know, saving some of the seeds in order to continue. We're going to put the onions for two reasons. One is because it goes a little bit along with these plants, they won't take too much space, and also the smell helps to repel a little bit some of the, of the box. We're going to put this one over here, so it has you know, enough space to grow on the sides. We're going to combine the onions to make a small, a small layer in between our lettuce and in this side our rucula, right? Okay? First, it's easier when you're going to take it like this from the small pot, it's easier when you have it uh, when you when it has a lot of moisture, you know, a lot of moisture it helps so the soil doesn't break and you don't leave to expose your roots. Okay, you will you will like to try not to pull the plant because you're going to hurt it. So let's just make like small taps until it fills. Also moving around. So we already had it out, and we're going to add a little bit of the, you remember, the worm pea, right? So you can use a small shovel, but I kind of like to use my hands to do this process, okay? So we're putting our plants and we're going to make sure to make it, you know, tighter, okay? So we have our lettuce over here. You can see it's already a little bit grown nicely. And we're going to add it, we're going to leave enough space from this plant over here because this one is going to grow, okay guys? So we're going to add it like maybe one hand from the top that we, we planted, okay guys? So we have our first lettuce and our chart, okay? Remember, always we're going to moisture them because this helps the roots to adapt better to their new home. You saw that I left enough space in between because these ones are going to grow but since we're going to be cutting them constantly, 
we're going to they're going to continue producing more leaves instead of cutting the whole thing we can just cut the leaves the big leaves that we want to use for a fresh salad during the day and they will continue growing okay our onions these ones we can either choose to separate them very carefully or plant them together you know so you separate your roots very easily then we have a small line where we want to plant them we press you know carefully we don't want to damage the plant but we want to make it feel that it's fixed in a place okay so after we finish planting we add a little bit more of this last one we already have arugula already a little bit big so we're going to prepare it in the last corner okay so we have our roots like this just for our roots to get some nutrients and some good bacteria that is going to help them to grow nicely. And we finish covering it, okay? Okay guys, so now we're almost done, but we still need to add one more part. This is very important, especially if we're going to keep our garden outside, but also it's very good to have it when you have it at home. This is called mulch in Spanish. Mulch. I have two things over here. I have lemongrass or té de limón in Spanish. So we're going to add a little bit of this to our mix of coconut substract or sustrato de coco so we can add a nice mulch to our area, guys, okay? So it's going to work for three things. To keep humidity, avoid other plants to grow, and also to repel naturally some of the bugs and eventually this becomes soil. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this. And now we're going to cut it in very small pieces on top of our pot. The idea is to cover the rest of the dirt area of our box. I already cut it like tiny pieces. You know, and if you will be able to smell it, it smells like really good. We can add some lemon to this and make a nice tea. But in this case, it's for the plants. And now we're going to add the coconut, okay? All of these, guys, the coconut, I have it here because as the soil, as the sand, as everything that I've been telling you, we clean it properly with good and beneficial bacteria that help to prevent fungi or other things grow in your box that you don't want to, okay? And it looks nicer, right? We are good, we finished. This is a good system that you can start with. If you feel like, okay, I want to plant something else, something different than you have here, just make sure to, to read a little bit more about the botanic of the plant so you can see a little bit more of the needs, how much sun they will need, how much water they will need, how much space they will need, and which other plants they can uh, grow good with these ones, you can just water them directly underneath the leaves. It's more easier, you, can, you don't necessarily need to use, you can just do it like this daily, okay guys? My hands are a little bit dirty right now, but if you want to see how humid is your pot, you can always do this and you can see humidity. So, yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new today. And um, hopefully you come to Guatemala and learn a little bit more about the, our agriculture practices in our country.